I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as we learn how to take your health back. Today, we have a very special friend joining us from Winters, California. Her name is Leslie Lucero. Leslie and I go back a few years in Hawaii as we sat in church every Sunday morning, having a great time and just sharing our, our blessings. We've done a few presentations and events and always had a blast. Let's welcome Leslie from Winters, California, who is the owner and trainer at Edge Fitness Academy in Cali. Now let's get started. Aloha, Leslie. Aloha, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I mean, I know yes, you're such a busy, too, busy too. lady and uh, I, we captured you. Yes. <laughs> My tech person, Eric and I, we captured you and we're gonna take all the energy out of you <laughs> for the next 20, 30 minutes okay. and share it with everyone. Awesome. So let's, let's get started and just share it with us a little bit about yourself before children. Okay. Um, so my background is personal training. I've been a certified personal trainer for the past 11 years. I have also a certification in fascia stretch therapy, and I'm currently going back to school for my bachelor's in nutrition. So, you know, for me, this path um, in my professional career was really just to try to get people moving. And then it just started evolving to learn to eat better and um, progress their lives in different ways other than, you know, just making money and stressing about all the things. And so that's really what um, I'm here for. I'm not just a, a personal trainer. I love helping people transform their lives physically and, you know, from the inside out. Wow. I know that um, from the very get-go, we were just two of us in church, and then all of a sudden there was a third person that joined <laughs> You, us, and yes. said, Who's this bottle over here, and then <laughs> your heart. So his name is Frank, or yes. AKA Frankie, and I know that you guys got married. And how long has it been that you you're married? So we've been married for eight years now. Wow. Um, so it's it's been a long journey for us both. Um, we did meet in Hawaii. My husband is from Winters, California, so that's why we're here. <laughs> and um we have three kids um my oldest is seven my middle is five and my littlest one is two so I am pretty busy with just being mom <laughs> wow yes full plate and I know that um I know that you're not gonna just be mom because I know whatever you do you are all in so what activity just give us one or two activities that you are involved with with your children Right now, I'm actually coaching both my older kids' soccer teams. <laughs> I used to be a very avid soccer player growing up. I played all the way till I was in high school. And um, now I'm coaching them. And it's it's been a joy. And it's also a little bit of, a, um, for me as a mom and, and, and a coach, I have to really balance that because they have to realize like, hey, I'm mom, but I'm coach on the field. So... <laughs> that's been fun and I get to you know get to share with them my knowledge of the sport itself so that's been awesome well just uh give us a little bit of insight how is it being a soccer mom for both mm -hmm. teams um how has COVID uh affected your teams your children's teams and uh, mm -hmm. where and how they play um right now you know it in California the guidelines are that you we have to social distance um as best as we can they aren't mandated to wear masks when they're outside, you know, outside sports. So that's awesome in my perspective. Um, you know, last year we were supposed to have a season because of COVID. We didn't have a season. And this is with all sports, I think, across the board, not just in California. I mean, you know, across the our, our states. So um, it's just really awesome to see the kids just enjoy being outside and being with their friends. Um, it's it's amazing. I mean, I can't even tell you as a parent to see the kids like run around and get sweaty again is wow. uh, I don't know. It just really made my heart happy wow. because these kids were so they needed it. They needed the outlet. So it, Amen. they sure do. Kids are made to run around. Yes. You know, like you growing up in Hawaii, you yes. knew we were at the beach until we were purple. You know, yeah. <laughs> time and right, play sand, play water, so anything, true. right? And then yes. when we got older, we used the McDonald's trays for our handboards when we were in body, <laughs> right? So uh -huh. yeah, going to Sandy's, that's yeah. what it was all about. 
That's Get right. It smashed by the waves. Right. But, yeah. you know. <laughs> and so I'm so glad that you feel the value of your children being out there, even though I'm sure it means a lot more laundry because now they're sweating and smelling a little yes, bit different. But I don't mind it. I don't mind <laughs> yeah. it. That's what we want to hear. We don't mind yeah, it, I don't right? Mind it. Yeah. So I know that you've always been an advocate for health and working out. I mean, ever since I knew you, you were always in the mm -hmm. best of shape. And, 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 you know, when I was sharing with you the health journey, you were right on it. And we, that's why we got along so well, because yes. we had the same goals and the same ideas about how to steward our bodies the way he wanted right. them to. Right. So please share with us your passion about this and how you turn that passion into business, mentoring everyone to take their health back. Wow. So, you know, I, I have to kind of tell you the backstory of um, the, the exercise part. Growing up, I was surrounded either I was on a basketball court or I was on a field. Like my stepfather is the high school basketball coach at Pearl City High School. So I was always surrounded by sports. That was like what we did, you know, as a family. That's what we were surrounded by. And I never understood it when I was younger until I got older, but I remember him saying things like, you know, when you're on a team, you learn more than just playing that sport. You learn teamwork. You learn that it's not just about you. You learn how to lose. You learn how to just be professional, whether it's like dressing appropriate when you're going to an away game. I used to just think, oh, you know, dad, he's just being strict. Oh, he's just being so mean. But as I got older, I appreciated those little life lessons. And then I graduated from college from UH Hilo. I had got my bachelor's in psychology. And then I came back to Oahu. And it was one of those aha moments of like, okay, what do you do now? <laughs> um, I started working at Powerhouse Gym in IA. And that's where I really started finding my passion. Um, I was doing sales. So I was selling memberships to the club. You know, I wasn't even a trainer yet, but I would have to sit down with them and talk about their fitness goals. And they would so like sit down with me, you know, for almost an hour sometimes because they're sharing with me how long, it, how, how much weight they want to lose or how, what their barriers were. And then I had to have trust that the trainer was going to deliver on all the things that I was hoping and writing on this paper. Right. So I started asking, what do I got to do to become a personal trainer? And, you know, I got the information, became a certified personal trainer. I ended up in, um, at UFC gym, which was opening its first club in Honolulu. And that was pretty godsend. It was right up my alley. I was training martial arts and I just been an avid like athlete. I was boxing, I was modeling. I just knew that this was where I wanted to be. And I was surrounded by intelligent professionals, not just like, okay, do five reps. You know, it, it was, they were so knowledgeable on the science of the body and why the body should be moving in this way. And it just created this fire in me to build on it. So um, with that, I started doing, you know, personal training at the gym and I was getting very successful um, there and started building a following. And I was helping so many people, not just with weight loss, not just with like gaining body mass, but just like having the confidence to date again or having the ability to, reduce their um how much medication they were on you know some of them were starting with five different medications and by the end of the six months they were training with me they were down to one wow you know so that was like huge for me and then I had my first my first child my son and like every mom you have to figure out the balance you know I wasn't able to hustle 12 hours a day which was like eight to 10 clients a day, I had to find a way to maximize my time so that I could still be mom. So um, we did move to California during that transition to winters. And that was really scary. You know, I left home. I left my following from home. I'm a real local girl that um, I talk different up here. I'm a uh, 
I look different up here. <laughs> so um, that was a big, a big barrier for me to overcome. And so I started with like outside boot camps just to, you know, create some traction for myself for, so people could know what I did. I started doing personal training out of my garage. Um, and then I opened Edge Fitness about four, four years later. So I was, you know, had these young kids. I had my second kid. I was trying to build the brand and then I built Edge. So, you know, during COVID last year, I, I unfortunately had to close my doors and uh, take a little bit of a break because as we all know, our kids all had to be home and they had to do school at home and I had to be there. Um, so I, I took that opportunity to be with my kids and I get kind of choked up talking about it because, you know, when you are very driven and you are a professional, sometimes it's really hard to slow down. Right. And I learned a really valuable lesson because it was like, do you slow down? and um, lose that traction of your business or do you invest in your kids? And that's what I chose as a mom and as a professional. And so I recently came back and opened up my business again. And it's been such a blessing to put the good work back out there. Um, I did have to do a lot of talking with the Lord <laughs> because, you know, with that, it's a lot of internal um, an internal sacrifice that you have to give right. because when you're working with whether it's personal training or fascia stretch therapy I'm I'm literally giving someone all my energy wow. so um that in itself is a lot and then to have three little ones at my at everything is really difficult so <laughs> it, I'm here I'm back I'm excited to um, rebuild edge to bring a broader um, element to it because you know I was just having one location and I know it's a need for me to reach out for those that are not even in my presence so that's where I'm at <laughs> now wow so true you can take a breath now <laughs> but you had such great mentoring and yeah. you know I must say kudos to you because um, where COVID is such a negative issue you turned mm -hmm. it into a very positive thing because you made a great, the greatest decision to invest in your children. And because of the, the situation, you made that decision. And you know what? It's lifelong changing for your, your three children, as well as your husband, your marriage. Yes. And also your future clients will see that you truly loved your art and your, your talent. But yes. you were able to walk away from it because something was more important at that time, which was your family. Yeah. So congratulations, Leslie, you passed the test. And now, <laughs> you know, you. I, I saw you disappear from Facebook. And when I saw you, yeah. pop up, I'm like, I'm going to grab her before she goes off of Facebook again. <laughs> here. And um, I just wanted to congratulate you. And I've been watching everything you do. Thank um, you. And then just wondering where you were, but I kind of knew that that's what you were doing. So congratulations. I'm so proud of you. Always. Oh, thank you. Yeah, always. And um, I know that uh, you have your the edge up and running again. And mm -hmm. I know we have a slide with you and some buddies in that room. Yes. And, um, oh, so man. I always know that buddy. It's my 5.30 a.m. class. <laughs> yeah, and you have to have buddies when you do anything in life because it becomes mm -hmm. more enjoyable when you do. So yeah, yeah, tell us more about this 5 a.m. class. So, uh, you know, um, a, I have a little bit of small group training, as we call it. It's not a huge class. We don't have more than eight women in that particular class. Um, I do have a class 5.30 a.m. every day of the week. And then I have a 6 a.m. class um, on Saturdays. So a couple things there. For, um, for a lot of people, yes, having someone there to keep them accountable is always going to be better for them to reach their goals or just to get moving again. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it, too, is creating that small group to where um, everybody has similar goals and has similar um, body types and lifestyle. I mean, not a lot of people get up at five in the morning to work out and then before they go to work. So right. 
these are specific individuals that are looking to maximize their time. And, and that in itself tells me a lot that they want to learn. They want to, you know, they want to get to their, their goals and get a result. But we do have small group. And then I also have personal training. So that's me working with someone one-on-one. -on -one. And we have fascia stretch therapy, which is the recovery part of um, EDGE. And what I try to do for all the clients that, you know, attend. But in that particular group shot there, they are, they've been with me since I think I've been here in winter. So it's like been almost six years now. Wow. And yeah, they they are diehards. <laughs> so once I came back on the social media, they were like, you need, I need to go to you, you know? Wow. So it's been really nice to have a warm welcoming back. Right. Um, it also has gave me time to reset so that I'm able to give them more. Um, wow. So I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. So you, you've created more than a bunny system. You created an ohana. Yes, a yes. Ohana through thick and thin, but you must be darn good because uh, waking up at five, that's a commitment. Yes. A commitment to not just want to be healthier and feel better and look better, but they got to want to be there and have fun. So mm -hmm. you must, you know, involve all of that within your training program. So that's oh, what yeah. drives them to wake up, to get on their uh, sweat clothes and get out there and start working out with you in the morning at five. Yes. So, the science behind that, actually. So, you know, most people will work out after they work. So at the end of their day. But what happens to the body is that's when your body really wants to rest. Right. So I always encourage people to try to come earlier because as your cortisol levels are higher, you're able to maximize results earlier in the day versus later in the day. And, and it also affects your sleep when you are working out later in the day because your core temperature is raised. We normally want your core temperature to lower in order for you to sleep better. So I know for a lot of people, sleep is an issue, right? You get sleep apnea or you have insomnia. So that's that's kind of the science behind it and the logic behind wow. it. Wow, that makes great sense. And uh, audience out there hearing that. Um, so be careful. You're going to be waking up earlier because more people will be wanting to come to your class and maybe earlier. <laughs> you shared with them. So be prepared, Leslie. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, there's a question from the viewer audience. And uh, I need to ask you, how do you know when enough exercise is enough? <laughs> Good question. So there's two indicators that most people will feel. One is extreme fatigue. So most people will try to push through it. I'm just gonna, you know, uh, what did they say? Like no pain, no gain. And I actually say the opposite, <laughs> that if you're feeling pain all the time, that's an indicator that maybe you're pushing it a little bit too much. So overtraining is very common where sometimes people will train more than their bodies allowing them to. For instance, women, we tend to push hard even through our menstrual cycle, which is actually the time that you should be resting. Right. So maybe maybe a light jog instead of lifting weights would be ideal during that time. And then also um, the other thing is injuries. So whether it's like chronic shoulder issues, knee issues, I get this a lot. That's why they come and get fascia stretch therapy for me is that they get injured. And even the most acute ways, that's a big indicator that you're doing too much. Right. So you need to either rest your body, give it better nutri nutrients and have a better recovery plan. Wow. Either I haven't been stretching out or working out that hard where I have this acute pain or I must be nutritionally fit. So, ah. <laughs> so must be, I must be nutritionally fit because I'm yeah. not working out that hard. <laughs> So I know that you train bodies physically. So I, you know, this is a fun part for both of us. How important is good nutrition, Leslie? So my, my rule of thumb is 80% of your result is your nutrition, what you put in your mouth. Um, you know, I think what's really great to say about nutrition and now that I'm going to school for it, it's, it's on a cellular level that it changes you. So every part of your being 
your physicality has a lot to do with what you put in it. It's information to your cells. So if you're putting in a lot of processed foods or junk food, fast foods, then that's exactly what's going to exude out. So, but when we say whole foods or eat real food, I'm talking about food that's going to be rotten in a couple hours or in a couple days because they were not used. That's what happens to real food. They rot. And so you want to be eating those kinds of foods, not when it's rotten, but you know, when they're, when they're, uh, they're fresh. So putting those types of information in the body will increase your immunity. It will give you more energy. It will help with bowel movements. So removing toxins, which is a huge indicator why someone may not be losing weight is because they're not getting the, that nutrient density of foods in their, in their, in their diet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very important. Very important. And, you know, I love hearing when young girls like yourself talk about bowel movements. <laughs> it's <laughs> before, important. Like, yeah, it's so important. I'm like, <laughs> but you know, before when we were like, I was your age, all the girls around me like, oh, what is she talking about? You know, bowel <laughs> movements, we call doo-doo, right? What is she talking about? And we, we Chinese, <laughs> we'd be eating dinner and we'd be talking about that because it is bloody important yes. to understand the BM and quality of BM. And uh, as we get older, we really truly appreciate it. But as young women, especially, they don't want to be talking about that. But, you know, it's so important. So yes. I'm glad that you brought that up because. um. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's how we remove toxins. Yes. It's not just by sweating. No, remove, the biggest no. way we remove our toxins within the body is through our bowels. Yes. And so I always tell my kids, make sure you look at your poops. Yes. <laughs> you know what yes. healthy poop looks like. Yes. You know, yeah. And get them very so comfortable important. with it. So they understand and they're aware because most people, they don't, they're not like, oh, that's disgusting. It's not. It's no. part of you. It's, it's a, part of who you are. Mm -hmm. It's a very real thing that happens yes. on a daily or should yes. happen on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah. And so for some, unfortunately, it doesn't, but um, we'll go on from there. So <laughs> I've been drinking my kale smoothie every day for the last 10 years. And I know I caught a picture of you and you have a uh, shake routine uh -huh. or something that you do as well for you and your children, I believe. Yes, I do. So I... Um, a typical mommy of three young kids that at first it's very hard to feed them very fibrous veggies. So I like to sneak their nutrients in smoothies. And one of our favorite smoothies that we have is a berry mix, frozen berry mix, half a banana. I have a green, um, it's called Organifi, which is a green um, superfood powder. Once you put water to it, it then becomes live food. And then I put in some spinach in there, throw in some peanut butter because peanut butter is always great to have. <laughs> and then some almond milk. So that's wow. kind of our smoothie that we um, have. Oh, and protein powder. I do put some protein powder in there. And this is a plant-based protein that I use. I, um, I do use a hemp based protein because my son, um, that's kind of the guy, the guy who catapult my um, interest really into like, I mean, when I say that is as a mom, you try everything you can, right. To figure it out. And my, my son had really bad asthma in when he was a baby wow. and I couldn't understand it. I was just like, why he's so little and I learned how dairy can affect that because it produces more mucus production. And so anywho, um, and then I learned about hemp protein and I found a really great one that tastes good. And it's not just like, you know, um, grassy, like, and really great on the stomach. So um, for kids in particular. And so that's what we throw in there and they think it's the greatest thing when wow. I make the smoothie they it don't realize that like a dessert yeah they don't think they're having a smoothie they I mean they really think it's chocolate milk <laughs> well, but you know the good thing is you're also creating their palates to receive that quality and oh, yeah. food yes so that's important that you're that you're training the palate not yes. just doing the right thing but for future as well so, yes 
And now my two older ones are very good at eating, like, I mean, solid, um, you know, green veggies, especially. So they'll eat spinach, they'll eat romaine lettuce, cilantro. I mean, and it's all due to the sneaking in yes. those nutrients you and creating that palate. palate. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's that's so important. And if we could do that, even with the as young as kids, you know, um, like Chinese, we, we make jok, which is we boil mm -hmm. down the veggies and rice. And we, as soon as we can feed them food, that's what we're giving them. And so they're having all that green stuff on yes. their tongue, in their body. So they, they don't have a problem eating it because that's what they were. That's all they knew. Yeah. So that's exactly. very important. So there's a lot to be said about food. And I know we're talking about real food, fake food. And I know that you are promoting real food as opposed to fake food. So just give us some um, other examples of what real food is. And, yes. Uh, yeah. So, you know, my whole thing too, is I take, I take clients on grocery tours because right. half the battle is like learning what real food is, learning how to read labels and um, better, higher quality foods. I call them like the higher, you know, the higher quality grocery list. Mm -hmm. So when you look at meat, you know, a lot of times, People have a bad rap on red meat, chicken, because they they may have watched like a documentary. Um, but if you know how the animal was raised, then it's it gives you a lot of yes. better uh, mindset of, around it. So moving to winters, you know, we're kind of in the midst of farmland. And I had the opportunity when I first moved here to visit these farms. I was just amazed. I was like wondering why isn't there all these farm stands? Why is everybody still going to Safeway when there's like a farm right there? I, it just wasn't, you know, connecting to me. And so I took it upon myself to go on all these farm tours and to see like, there's farmers still out here that do grass fed beef, you know, maybe a, a wheat finish, but every, the cows are roaming freely. The chickens are like roaming freely. They're not in cages where they're stepping all over their poop, like what you would right. see on the uh, main media. So it's really has to do with like knowing where your food's coming from mm -hmm. and how they're being raised, especially meat, because people get funky about that. And right. then when it comes to veggies, like being educated on what's the difference between organic, why are you paying a little bit more for organic? Why is it, um, why is it a better investment to pay a little bit more on organic? Because that's the feedback, right? Like, oh, it's so expensive, or I'm not gonna afford it, you know. Mm -hmm. And and then at the same time, meeting people where they're at. So mm -hmm. going down the line, like organic's best, local's great, you know. Um, commercial vegetables is awesome frozen is your next option but you know giving and meeting people where they're at it's a transition because sometimes it's like taking caffeine you know cold turkey away from somebody gonna have they're gonna have major <laughs> withdrawal they're gonna have and, it yeah wow. and so wow. food can be the same way especially right. if they use that as a as a comfort wow. thing so um <laughs> teaching them at that visceral level for me is so, so like, important. You have to. I'm so glad that you have that part of your, your training that you take them to the grocery store, but wow, you're a local girl that does good wherever you journey. You know why you bring the law spirit with you. Yes. And I'm so proud of you for representing Hawaii. Well, but Thank you know, we've you. come, we've got to leave it there for now. Okay. And, uh, you've been watching, taking your health back on think tech Hawaii. Mahalo to Leslie Lucero, local girl does good and represents Hawaii all over the world and wherever you travel with and as you continue with Edge Fitness Academy. So thank you for talking and sharing your love and aloha with us from California. Mahalo yes. to all our viewers for watching. You're welcome. I'm Wendy and we'll be back in two weeks with another edition of Taking Your Health Back. Aloha everyone.